Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And uh, something that amazes me about working here is I learn something new every day. And that's what these videos are really, is, is a, a blog of what I've learned today. We had a water intrusion problem below our 01 centerline officer's head. If you uh, check your book of general plans, this is compartment 01-120-0L. It is the, uh, the main head for the officers in the 01 level staterooms. Uh, we're, we're roughly midships, we're just a little bit behind the expansion joint in the superstructure. Uh, so we knew there was a water intrusion problem down here and we knew there was rush jacking in this area that had caused the tiles to bow up. Over there you can still see some of it. That's where it was the most mild. Um, and looking over here you, you can see, holy cow, look, look at all that scale that just pops up. So, it was pretty obvious where the uh, water intrusion problem was coming from. Like, we still use this for our encampment program. When I spend the night on board, I take a shower here. Um, our staff is the same way. So we found an issue, but it is all aft of frame 123. Forward of frame 123, uh, there is a really weird hump in the deck that we had to investigate what it was. So this piece of tile with this inch thick leveling compound is from aft of frame 123. This piece of tile with this skin coat under it is from forward of this. And if you look at this, you can see that there is a very pronounced hump in the deck here. You look at the blueprints and that doesn't show up. You look at the original blueprints and uh, it's just a birthing compartment down here. The, the birthing compartment ends at about frame 122, uh, more or less directly below where I am. Why is there this hump here? Why do we go from a deck that is wavy and, and uh, thin and, and uh, has these through hole penetrations and all this scale to an area that is uh, clearly newer steel and an inch thick and meteorologically this is better. This, this is armor plate. They didn't armor a birthing space. What happened? Below us, right at this bulkhead, is Radio Central. In the 1980s, they moved the radio room from where it had been below decks and installed uh, the 400 hertz electrical equipment there to control some of the missile stuff and the new radar stuff that operates at a higher frequency than the, uh, was it 60 hertz stuff that the ship's turbo generators produce. And we just found out that they armored that space after they installed it. They went from being in the armored citadel to the main deck. That probably also made it easier to run the uh, cables to the antennas and whatnot from the equipment. We now know that they put one inch thick splinter protection over it, even though I've never seen that in any plans or any documents. Uh, here is the armored roof that they put on, and it's been hidden by the leveling compound here. Let's go down to the radio room and we'll see if they added any splinter protection down there. Sure enough, here we are at the door to Radio Central, and you can see it's not a standard door. This is definitely an 80s era door. It is not one of the original World War II doors. And you can see both these built up welds and the thickness of this steel here. On the inside, there's insulation. It's a radio room, you've got a birthing space outside of it. This is a, a secured classified space where classified information is being passed. So there's sound dampening insulation. Uh, but here at the door frame, sure enough, you can tell that there's inch thick armor that has been welded over this and, and a new, more secure door. Uh, and so it shouldn't be surprising that they also armored the roof. We know CEC when they installed the new equipment there, uh, they, they put uh, two inch HY80 steel on the sides and roof of that. So not surprising that they did here as well, except that the head up above never changed what it was, but they must have completely gutted it, laid the armor plate, and then reinstalled the head after that, which is a little bit surprising. Um, but given the scope of work that they accomplished in the 1980s reactivation, maybe it shouldn't be. I had noticed the thickness of this door before and thought that maybe just because it's centerline supporting the rest of the tower superstructure that it was built up for that. But now, given that it has an armored roof as well, we can be pretty certain 
that they provided splinter protection over the radio room after they moved it out of the armored citadel. There's a uh, link to the booklet of general plans below here. Is there anywhere else you think would have been up armored in the 80s besides CEC and the radio room? Let us know in the comment section down below and we'll check it out and confirm. Uh, because I know you guys are gonna ask, yes, we are going to crop out and replace all the areas with the holes up in the superstructure. We'll probably use quarter inch plate. We're not gonna continue the, the armor uh, any further after. And then we'll repatch the, uh, the tiles and it'll look like nothing ever happened. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. Your support not only allows us to do the critical restoration projects like that, that prevents water from propagating through the ship and deteriorating her, uh, but also gives us the free time to do the research to find out what we've unearthed as we do this archaeology, uh, digging up the tile and other parts of the ship. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to uh, donate to continue supporting us. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about us in the museum. Thanks for watching.